everybody. Thanks for joining Game Trade Media at Alliance Open House. I'm Gretchen, and I'm here with John and Anthony, and they're going to show us some of their games from Genius Games. That's right. So I'm John, the founder of Genius Games, and we actually just acquired another company called Artana. And this is one of Artana's new releases. Um, Anthony's going to show us how to play, and then hopefully we'll get in a quick round, and we'll see how we do. So Lovelace and Babbage is sort of a, a programming mental math game in which we're going to be um, creating the world's first computer here on this board. Um, and so yeah. we have these sheets of paper here in front of us. You notice that we have a code that starts at the number 55. And so we're going to be inputting these uh, pieces of code into, into our code here, um, these programs in, to change the number 55 to hit different goal cards. And so um, at the start of a round, we're going to be revealing these five goal cards. You'll notice that they have different we'll numbers. Um, they have different resources on them. Um, they'll be out available for everybody. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to take this number 55 and change it using these inputs to hit some of these numbers. Um, so we'll play right. over the course of four rounds here. We have four columns here. Um, and you only get uh, a limited number of lines of code. And so right. you have to be really efficient. Um, so <laughs> there's That's right. you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Th there's, <laughs> a, there's a lot of pressure right now. I'm like, oh, gosh, think back to every math class I've That's ever right. had. I'm going to keep saying no pressure. And every time <laughs> I say it, you're going to feel more pressure. Yep. And it's real time. So as a quick example, if you're starting on a f off at 55, this right here, the first one, A1, if you were to input an A1 on here, you can put A1 plus and then make it 56, or you could a put A1 minus and make it 54. And you're going to do that in real time. And you have only five rows here. So if I was to, let's say I'm, try I'm really trying to go for this 30. Over here is a, is a 20. I'm at 55 right now. So I could do B2 minus. Well, that 55, that brought me down 20. So now I'm at 35. I need to reduce it by five more. So then I have to go A3 minus, And I'd subtract the five off of that. Now, no one else knows what you're doing. You're just trying to think of it in real time. Write it down. Once you feel like you're good... With the number you have, you grab the, the sand timer here. Oh, yeah. it's timed math? It's it, timed it, math. <laughs> it's even worse. What's interesting about it is it becomes timed math. Oh. It's not timed at first until the first player feels like they're happy with their code. They're going to grab this first player marker, which is also a timer, and they're going to flip it. And that puts pressure on the rest of the players. So now everybody else has 60 seconds to finish their code. Oh, and, man. And so then it's a race to grab player two, player three, player four. And I'm going to explain what that means in just a second. Um, but you'll notice each player is going to have uh, sort of these, these hands of cards. These are your own personal goal cards. Oh. And so these are available for everyone to try and hit. This one is one that you're personally trying to hit. And you might pick one based on a, a special ability that you want in a future round. So these allow you to break the rules in certain ways. They might, they might allow you to be within plus or minus one of a number, so you don't have to be quite exact in your math. Or that might give you extra lines of code to use in future rounds or something like that. Um, and so we're going to be shooting to hit some of these personal gold cards as well as these shared gold cards. Now, I want to explain as well what some of the scoring is, because it's going to explain sort of the difference uh, in what you're doing in terms of uh, what your goal are in the bottom left you're going to see um, sort of a pool of different resources Definitely. those are those are these symbols here as well it that's the set collection aspect of this game and so if you're not super into math it's okay you could be really good at set collection and still uh, still come out victorious and so as you kind of hit these numbers you're going to collect one of these resources and you're going to put a checkbox in that resource down here and then the player with the most of any given resource is going to earn nine points at the end of the game second place in that resource is going to earn four points so pretty right. standard set collection um, and if you're the First, you get the choice between those two, and then it's tapped. And the second player to get it gets whichever one was not chosen by the first player who chose that card. All right. And then after that, it flips it over, and it's no longer available for these icons, but it is available for this Sigma icon, and that's just worth one point if you were to hit it after it's already taken. Yeah, so you're not totally punished for losing the race and trying to hit a number. Maybe maybe yours is farther down the line, and this has all been claimed by the time you get there. You still get one point. It's not great, but it's something. <laughs> um, you're also going to score some points for hitting your own personal goal cards each round. And then in future rounds, we'll reveal some of these. Um, they're going to introduce more complicated math programs, yeah, for instance. Throw some out there. And so you're also going to earn points at the end of the game for having used uh, programs that are that are more complicated. And so if you, if you throw some more complicated math in there, it's going to get you some points at the end of the game. The only other thing that makes it kind of fun, you have all the way on the right on your sheet here, Gretchen, you'll see that there's this little bug icon. Yes. Um, if you're, so 
what makes it a little tricky is as you're inputting code, you don't actually get to write the number. You're just writing in A1 minus B B2 plus without putting the number in. You're tracking in your head, wait, where am I now? Yeah. Oh, man. And so yeah. you might find at the end of the round, oh, no, I screwed up, and this is not what I thought it would be. You can debug your code change the number to what you meant for it's it to be my be. best friend yeah <laughs> that's right and you're just going to put a checkbox here in the, in this bug column you only get two throughout the game and those are going to uh, reduce your your score by three points at the end of the that's game right. but it might be worth it if it doesn't <laughs> ruin the whole rest of your code by doing that and later on if you were to able to use the row c d and e which you can't do the first round because the first round only a and b are available you'll get to mark off the c d and e gear down here and so anytime you use a c it's going to be worth one point if you notice there's one point down mm -hmm. here the d's are worth two and the e's are worth four and there so as you're moving through you're also trying to use some of these more complicated functions down at the very bottom yep so i think that i mean that's pretty much pretty much it i mm -hmm. mean the way john explained at the beginning it's that's the that's the nuts and bolts of how it actually plays and this is just sort of giving you direction and what you might try to do are you interested in trying to give this a go all right i i will the try the pressure is <laughs> on. I, will, I will try i make no promises that's in my it. mathematical capabilities but that's okay <laughs> Should we, uh, maybe we could put blindfolds on and then you oh, could have a blindfold. That would be really No, we difficult. couldn't even do it then if we had blindfolds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so the way this is going to work um, is we're going to select a goal card. We're just going to play one round, so so maybe just pick a number that you feel like you want to hit and don't base it so much off the text of the card. Uh, now, two other things that we didn't say out here. This one right here, if you do A4, it actually switches the two numbers in their location. Now, 55, if you switch that, it's still 55. Mm -hmm. But say it was a 24 and you switched them, it'd now be a 42 because you switched the location of the numbers. And this one is divide or multiply by 2. So, and you always round down so that um, 55 would actually be a 27 if you divided by 2 because you'd round it down or a 110 if you multiplied it by 2, but you can't go over 100 because there's only two ah, digit spaces here. Okay. Yep. That's okay. a way that you could jump around a little quicker. Now, you don't have to actually try and shoot for one of these. They just give you a benefit if you do. But um, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't achieve it, it's fine. If you um, get four of them, one each round, you'll actually score a whole bunch of points from this set collection right here. So what if I... I'll try, I'll try this Michael one. Michael card is 48. And I will do 52. All right. I might be messing us all up, but I'm going to choose 14. That's great. There we go. Okay. So the way this will work, here, let me hide these. We're not going to use oh, these yeah, for this first round. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to reveal the five cards. Once the five cards are revealed, that's go time. And then remember the first player to be happy with where their code is. Maybe you hit a couple of goals along the way. You grab the first player marker, and that puts the timer on everybody else to finish theirs up as well. Now, just this is, this is upside down, so it might be confusing, but this is 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50. All right. Okay. Are ready? You ready? 1, 2, Three, four, and five. Oh, wow. Let's They're go. upside down. That's hard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so sure. Where would I start? Um, so <laughs> you, you can either try and achieve this number or try and achieve one of these numbers. So here, as an example, I'll show you what I did. Um, 55, if I use B4, which will give me a division or a multiplication by, by 2, I did B4 division. So I can divide 55 by 2. Now, 55 divided by 2 is going to give me 27 if I round down, so I actually have gotten that number already, the 27. All right, so Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And then what, and so now I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna try and get as many as I can. So then I did, and I have to remember I'm at 27 now. And then I did B2 uh, plus, so I did B2 plus, that's gonna add 20 to it. And so that puts me at uh, 47. And then I did B2 plus again and add 20 more, that's gonna put me at 67. And so I'm going to stop right there, and that's why I grabbed this, because I'm, I'm right. essentially starting the timer for everyone else. All right, I think... And I have to remember what I've, what I've just done. All right. John did much more complicated math than I did. I, <laughs> I tend to get close, and then you just did like the A1s and the mm -hmm. A2s, and that can sometimes be enough to get you there. Yeah, if you, can, if you can get close, you can always get within the right number by doing A1s and A2s, because this is just adds, or, adds one or, or minuses one, and this adds two or minuses two, and then that one five. All right. There you go. All right. I think I think I've I've I'm trusting my math. Okay. I'm trusting my I'm not trusting my I, math, but <laughs> I trust your math too, Gretchen. You have very trustworthy math. So once you feel good about what you've got, I'll grab I grab the timer 
okay. then the whoever is who whoever grabs a second player next will grab that one. Whoever feels good about it. If you feel good, it's real time. So are you are you done? Well, you're yeah. you're, you're locked out, so you've uh, got to grab one, right? Uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with mine too. So I'll grab player okay. two, and then if you're happy with yours as well, you can grab player three. Or if you want to take the next. 20 seconds to try and change yeah, your you, number to be something else you now have this time to work with because you know you're going to be the third player at, right. at this point once anyway. that last player once that last player is there they actually have more time because they don't they as soon as the clock runs out that's when they have to stop it's only real time to grab the first <laughs> few markers all right but if you feel good where I you're feel at good. I okay feel good. let's do that let's do that then great and so the reason that this is uh, important, player turn is important, is because we will resolve our code one line at a time, mm -hmm. starting with player one. And so maybe a few people are trying to get this 67. John might get there first and get to claim the resource that he wants. Right. And if I get there later as a, as a later player, I might not get to, to choose. So let's do it as an example. 55, if you divide. So I used B4 divide. B4 divides that by 2. So that will be 27. Because um, you round down, mm -hmm. which means I, I achieved uh, this card right here. So I would choose any one of these two icons, and I think I'll choose the uh, the Boar's Atom here, and which means we um, or, or we tap it that way because the one that we used goes on top, and I get to cover that up. So I am now in the lead for majority for that one, and then it would be the second um, player's turn. Yep, so that goes to me. I used A3 minus, which is going to turn my 55 so just A3. into A50, a yep. minus 5. And then he didn't do it. That, that, that's that the one thing no that he numbers. does. So that didn't hit any All right, yeah. so back to me. And I chose B3 minus. Oh, very good. So that's good. minus 50, so I get five. Oh, I didn't even see that, that one. Was uh, that was clever. Slow and steady. There you yes. go. Wins the math yes. race. <laughs> okay, so now you get to choose either of these. You get to choose the um, icon on the left or the icon on the right. All right. Now you know that I'm already going for the icon on the left. So True. you could compete over it, or you could go for the feather over here on the right. I'll, I'll take the feather. I'll take okay. the feather. All right, so we'll tap it that way. Now it's back to me. I did B2 plus, so B2 adds 20, so we're at 47. That doesn't get me anything, so it's the next player's turn. Yes, and I did A4, which is going to swap the digits of this 50, turning oh. it into A05. Very nice. So I took a slower route to get to this 5 than you did. You did better math than I did. Now, I don't have a choice. I have to take the atom because you've already claimed the feather. Yes. So right. I'm going to fill that in. And now that one is gone. So now if one of us hits five again, we're just going to get the one sigma point. Which is right here, this one right here. All right. Okay, um, so he, he's done. Now it's back to All you. All right, so then I chose A1, which was uh, and plus, so that's plus 10. That has me at 15. It's, ba no. it's um, backwards, so I think you actually meant B1 because this oh, is the one. No, it's that's upside okay. down. We're that's okay, though. Down. We're reading it upside down, so that was a that was a very <laughs> honest mistake. Yes. But just, so th just for the followers there at home, <laughs> that would be B1 um plus right yes. b1 I plus would get you at 15 yes. get me at 15 thought it would be my math that's it's right. really my reading that's <laughs> no, it's, <all> right. <laughs> it's um, your up to upside down reading specifically true. specifically and now if you did another a1 minus, minus one i would have gotten my 14 that's right yeah. well you can write it in real quick okay okay it was you, you still had time, remember, uh, when, when that thing, when that thing flipped. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on my turn, I would do a B2 plus again, which adds another 20. That puts me at 67, and that allows me to claim uh, this card here. I think because you're going for the feathers over mm -hmm. there, I think I'm going to go for the leaves, and that then taps um, that. Okay, great. And now I'm done because I have turn. no more rows. I put in A4 again to go back to 50 which, again, is currently nothing. All right, good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, John. You're, you're so <laughs> I haven't put anything else on my sheet. So would that mean yeah, that, so that would so mean you're you'd done. be my turn? Yeah, that would mean you are done. Now, mm -hmm. say that you had put the A1 um, pull, a minus on there. And I would have gotten the 14. You would have gotten this 14. And that means next round now, this is available. All opponents take one less operation this round. So we would actually have to scratch the bottom operation off. We can only use four uh, if you were to do that. You picked really a mean funny. card. You picked a mean did. card. I'm vicious. I got to make up for my, <laughs> 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 my right. mental math oh. skills some other way. Now, the other thing is that you, since you got this personal card, you uh -huh. get to mark off one of these over here. Your first one's worth two, your oh. second's worth two, and then four, and then eight points. So this is a lot of points if you get one of these cards right. every round. Yep. And right now, um, you're the only person that can achieve that. I didn't achieve mine, so the max I can hit is going to be four points on, on, okay. on those cards. Yep. 
So in this scenario, you guys have finished your code, so it would just come back to me to finish the yep, last few lines of my down. code, which I did A2 minus, which puts me at 48, which does hit my card, so I would mark that off here. Very good. And then I just stuck another A2 plus in there because I felt like 50 was a better starting place for the next round than the 48. It, it really doesn't matter. It's sort of inconsequential. Because in the next round, the bottom number here will go up to the top, and you'll yep. start with that round. You'll start with that number the next round. Awesome. And that's basically it. And you're just going to do that four times. The player with the most um, set collection points down here is going to win the so game. So what age range would you say this would be best for? Well, that's a tough question. Um, you know, it depends if the family's a gamer, a gamer family. Mm -hmm. Some of the logic here might be difficult for younger kids, but kids that grow up in gamer families that are used to heavier games, it might be really easy for them. But what do we, it's 14 and up on the box. On the box right? Yeah, yep. as we say 14 and up on the box, and I think that's pretty fair, although we've had kids quite a bit younger than that actually play the game. All right, awesome. Yeah. And it says four players at most, so. Uh, yes, four yes. players yeah, at two, most. Yep. Two to four. Two to four, awesome. Well, I do believe you had another game to show me. We do have another game, yes. It's called Ecosystems. Let's get to it. Oh, let's go. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about Ecosystem. Okay, this is Ecosystem. Now, this is a card drafting game. Each player is dealt 10 cards. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do on a turn, and I'll show you how it scores and everything else. What you're going to do on a turn is you're going to choose one of those cards. You're going to place it face down in front of you, and then you're going to reveal it at the same time, and you're going to pass the remaining cards to the player on your left. Okay. Now, why would you choose one of the cards in your hand over the others? Well, that's a great question. Um, sorry, I, I gave you your own question. <laughs> I was thinking it. I was thinking it. It was there. You saw it. Uh, yeah. I've done this a few times. I think that's, <laughs> that, that might be why. Um, okay, so what you're trying to do, you've got this little cheat sheet right here, mm -hmm. and this tells you how cards score. So as an example, your fox, this scores three points as long as it is not adjacent to any wolves or bears. Okay, so if we look at this little grid down here, when once once the game is over, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna draft these cards, ten cards twice. So there'll be twenty cards total in each player's grid. I'll have my own. Anthony will have his own. You'll have your own grid, and it will be four cards high by five cards wide. You didn't think you're gonna do math, but four times five <laughs> is twenty, which means ten cards, two rounds. Surprise right? math. Yeah. Surprise math. Um, and so this grid that you're creating is going to score you points based upon the adjacencies of all of your animals in your habitats. Ah, okay. So I did the meadow right here. That's what I played face down. Or maybe we'll all, we'll all pick a card. So I think what I'm going to start with, I've got a lot of decent cards in here. I've got an eagle. I've got a rabbit. I've got bees. I've got wolves, fox, bear. I've got pretty much everything in my hand right now. I think I'm going to start with a meadow because the meadow says each set of adjacent meadows scores 0, 3, 6, 10, and 15 points for the number that I have. So one of these is going to score 0, but if I was to get 5 of these, I'll score 15 points if they're all adjacent to each other. So I'll play that one, and then we will actually pass our cards to the player yeah, on once, the left. Once we've all picked a card, technically we play them all face down. Yeah, that's right. And then at <laughs> the same time, once we've all picked them, we're going to reveal them. That's pretty common in card drafting games, kind of like Sushi Go and things Seven like that. Seven Wonders. Ion, we have another card drafting game. So at this point, you could almost choose any of them at yeah, this point. Yeah, all right. Because it's not going to matter as much until you have, say, a chain of them. But maybe what if you went with, oh, see, I'm kind of cheating because I'm going to get to see what, what's next. I'd probably play a stream because there's a decent amount of streams. Streams and trouts and dragonflies, I'll show you those. Um, there's the dragonfly. There's the trout. There's the stream. These all play, they combo really well with each other. So I'll, I'll explain how. The dragonfly, that scores points equal to the number of dragonflies multiplied by adjacent streams. So if you have a stream of, say, five cards and they're all connected, and you have three dragonflies, oh. five times three, you're going to score 15 points for that connection. And then the trout scores two points for each adjacent stream and dragonfly. So right here, this combo, something like this, that trout's going to score two. If there's a dragonfly here, it'd score four points. Okay. So you're trying to connect those adjacencies. Um, but we'll, we'll keep it right there for now. Right. We'll, then we all reveal... Uh -huh. Now Surprise. I see you going for a stream. Yeah. I'm going for a meadow. He's going for a stream. Pass the cards to the player on our left, do and then we do. select a new one. Okay, All let's right. see here. I might go ahead and play another meadow because I really want to connect these meadows together. Um, and I also, if I look at the bees, the bees score three points for each adjacent meadow. So it, it might be really smart of me to try and... Oh, I don't have any bees in here, but I do know I passed a bee, so I'm going to keep... Keep that in mind. Oh, I did. I did pass right. a B. Okay, so you play your card face down for now, and then reveal, reveal at the same reveal time. And yep. Another stream. Oh, another Great. stream. Ah, and so he played that dragonfly. The dragonflies are pretty good Go. with the stream, so f we'll probably be competing over that space a little bit. 
Oh, very good. So there's that B that I wanted. So I'll take that B and I'll oh, replace right. it up here, I think. I think I need to take some streams before you take them off. <laughs> so. All right, then we reveal. All right, reveal. Okay, pass. And now I have some life in my streams. Oh, another B. I think I'm going to... Um, You're creating an ecosystem. I'm creating Amazing. an ecosystem. And basically, we don't have to play the whole thing through, but basically we will do this um, until all 10 of these cards are gone. Um, and at that point, we will deal 10 new cards to each player. Mm -hmm. um, 10 plus 10 is 20. We will then have a um, 5 wide by 4 high grid, and we will score points using this little pad right here. We'll score foxes first, and then deer, and then bears, and eagles, and bees, and meadows on down. Um, and then you also will lose points if you don't have enough biodiversity. Ah. So if you score zeros in four of these um, rows here, four of these animals or, or habitats, you'll actually lose two points. So if you, you, you don't just want to take as many streams as possible. That's exactly, exactly right, yep. because that's not a very um, diverse um, um, uh, habitat. And if you were to have six zeros, so essentially half of um, your rows here, you'll lo you'd lose 10 points. So you don't want to just work on, on one type of strategy. You want to ha have as much biodiversity as possible. And One of my favorite things about this game is is there's a lot of rules to learn at first. There's a lot of different kinds of cards. There's 11 different kinds of cards, but they're really intuitive, right? Like the, the trout want to be next to the stream, and the bear wants to be next to the trout, mm -hmm. and the dragonfly wants to be next to the stream, and the bees want to be in the meadow, right? And sort of um, right. subtly teaches you some things about uh, ecosystems, and it's intuitive in ways that, that after playing through once, you pick it up pretty quickly because it, right. it makes a lot of sense in that way. Yeah. Yeah, the predator animals want to be next to the prey animals, and the prey animals want to be away from the predator animals. And, and so on. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty fun little awesome. um, card drafting game. It takes uh, maybe 10, 15 Just minutes, minutes really yeah. quick. Once That's people, really, really quick. Yeah. 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 We usually, when we sit down and play, um, it's the kind of game where if you lose by a few points, you want to play again right away. <laughs> could see that being really popular with families with multiple children. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. And that is ecosystem. That's awesome. So when uh, you said it's available for pre-order, both games. It is available for pre-order. It releases... So uh, Ecosystem comes to pre-order November 13th. It mm -hmm. uh, releases November 13th. Uh, or, or yes. It's yes. in pre-order now. Uh, Lovely and Babbage it becomes available October 16th. Awesome. So there people go. can go to their local game store and just ask to be put on pre-order and... Yes, please. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Um, so is there anywhere else we could go to get information on any of these games? Yes, you can find us at GeniusGames.org. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find our Twitter handle, Got Genius Games, on Twitter. We're on Facebook, Genius Games. We're on all the normal social media channels. Uh, we try and keep up. Anthony tries to keep up with that. But, yeah, all the basic pl places online. Thank you, too, for coming out and showing us both of those games. I'm Gretchen, and we'll see you at the game store.